Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at Ord. Dash oracle.com. That's Ord dash oracle.com. Tim Ord, you hit it out of the park, doing? man. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Well, anyhow, uh, I sent you over five charts, and uh, actually, I want to look at the uh, the uh, the weekly uh, GDX chart first. It awesome, looks that's the one I have picture. up. And uh, well, anyhow, this this chart goes back to like 2010, and I. What I did, uh, anyhow, the, the bottom, I'll describe the, the indicators. This is a weekly chart. And the bottom chart, I showed this chart before on this show. Yeah. But the bottom chart is the uh, GDX up, down volume percent, and that's a cumulative. Um, I, t I took the cumulative of that chart on the weekly time frame. Okay. Then the next ch next chart up is the uh, GDX advanced decline percent, and I took the cumulative of that. And... Basically, since 2023, uh, it kind of went sideways. It did when it closes above the uh, mid Bollinger Band. It's usually a buy signal, and when it closes below, it's, a, it's usually a sell signal. Kind of. So, what I'm trying to do is catch the trend here. Yes. And if you notice, those previous signals they work out pretty well. Once, once those two indicators are below the Bollinger Band, it's a good sell signal a lot of times. But sometimes you get in these markets that are kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. And I circled the last one that happened. That was in, like, 2016. We kind of went up, went back down. I see and it. finally got going to the upside. Then that ran into a sell signal in, in late 2020. Uh, late 2020 or, or January 2021, uh, it gave a, an, a pretty good sell signal, even though the market on GDX went sideways. Uh, internally, the market, you know, the, the gold or the gold stocks in GDX went right through the floor. Right, because this pretty much measures the, um, uh, I, I guess, the acceleration to the downside of most gold stocks did in that time frame, from the sell signal in 2021 until uh, basically January of 2023. You know, 90. I don't know what exact percent it was, but. Majority of the gold stocks went through the floor. Yes, and uh, and that's usually a good sign. Uh, once you find the next low, right? Because everything's been destroyed. I mean, is sure. So they're not going to go down anymore. So it's kind of a good deal. So now we're we're getting a, uh, you know, since basically January, uh, you know, we've gone up, we've gone down, we've gone up, and right now uh, the uh, weekly cumulative. Uh, uh, Advanced decline is above the well. It's, on, it's a little bit above the mid Bollinger Band, which is on the buy. But on the bottom there, the up down volume is still below. But the advanced decline is really the market. I mean, if the Mueller stocks are going up than down, I don't care what up volume down up down volume says, because you got more stocks going up than uh, you're getting a bull market. Right. But anyhow, we've been kind of flipping sideways here. Um, and most of these signals, I, I uh, timed those signals in the past, most of these signals, when they do occur, they're about a, a year and a half, two-year signal. And so in I, particular, thinking, Tim, you know, I, I'm sorry, in you, particular, too, because we went sideways for three years, this should be a, you know, a longer time frame, right? The longer you go sideways or the longer base right. out, yeah. right? Right, yeah, yeah. If you go sideways for a month, you don't, you don't expect a, a rally to last a year. Right. Uh, but you go sideways for a year, you can expect a rally to last a year or maybe even longer. Yes. So it's all about base billing here. Right. And and that and that's what's kind of happening here. So I think an important signal is going on here, and I don't think it's just going to be a, well, we're having a rally right now, I think, the last possibly in October. But in general, I think we're, we're going to start something a little bit bigger, similar probably, I don't know, like, 2019 or 2016 type rally. Yeah. And I, I think they're going to be real meaningful because of what's been going on here with this chart. So let's flip to the next chart. Okay. And the next chart is uh, uh, GDX uh, advanced. Or the bottom window is GDX up down volume yep. uh, percent. And it was a 50 day moving average. And I screwed around with these different moving averages and tried different combinations of the up-down volume and advanced client indicators. 
And these seem to work best over, you know, why I could, because this chart, these type of indicators only go back to 2010. So I couldn't go back 50 years, but going back, you know, uh, what, 12 years. That's whatever, right. That's because the GDX has only been in place since 2010, right? Which is cool. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyhow, so, you know, the bottom window is the, seems to work the best. Um, anyhow, when you get the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume percent below minus 20, uh, either you're going to go sideways or up. The down is over. You know, so everybody hit the market hard. You know, all the selling is done. So either it's going to go sideways. A lot of times it does. Build a base. Or it's going to reverse and start going up. And so uh, I'm thinking... Uh, if you notice that indicator has been going up, uh, I don't have the exact date here, but it looks like, uh, uh, well, I think it gave it a June, June buy signal, mid June buy signal. Yes. I don't have the exact date there, but anyhow, it hit, hit a bottom in June. It's turned up since and it's been going up. So it's now it's flipped to, um, the short term indicator. And this is, the uh, same indicators, but on an 18-day average. Okay. And uh, the blue area is noted when both indicators are, you know, the blue area is when both indicators are above minus 10, and when it's below minus 10, that's when it's pink. I see. And so uh, the minus 10, it seems to be the, the numbers, not zero, but minus 10. Right. So we flipped above. Actually, the last show, I, I think we, we talked about this indicator. We did. And I told you, well, it turned up and turned back down. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, once it starts hanging around that minus 10 area, it start it is, it is going to go up because it just really doesn't stay there too long. It either makes its mind up going up or, go, or going back down. Well, last Thursday, you know, it turned down right. I think the day later it turned back up. And now it's, it's staying up. As long as this indicator stays above minus 10, it can, you know, it can consolidate and go back and test that. If you look back in uh, December, you know, of uh, last year, you know, it kind of got to that minus 10 level a couple of different times, but stayed above it, and the rally continued. So as long as this indicator stays above minus 10, uh, the rally should continue. I also want to note that seasonality turned bullish, uh, uh, July 7th, and that runs into October 7th. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking uh, that adds to the, I guess, the bullishness of this rally. And how high it will go, don't know. I think we'll at least break above the previous highs, which is up around 36. I think we may even go higher. I don't know. But even though when this indicator does turn down, say, later this year, because this is more or less a... Um, a monthly, uh, I see, I hear your music. We, yeah, we can just talk stay, on, just stay on right the there. We, folks, we're just going to take a quick break. Tim's going to be right back with us. We have the Dow, they're running this market, man. We have the Dow Industrials up 69, the Nasdaq's up 226, SPs are up uh, 37. Tim and I are going to be right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials up 72. You get the Nasdaq up 226. S&Ps are up 37. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. You can reach Tim, folks, every trading day at Ord. O-R-D-Oracle, O-R-C-E-L-E dot -E com. That's O-R-D-Oracle dot com. Right now, we're talking about the GDX. Okay, Tim, we're ready. Right. right. Remember, uh, uh, I don't know if you remember this, back in April, um, if you look at, let's just look at the chart first, but back in April, if you notice the um, the bottom one, though, is the 18-day uh, average of down, down uh, volume, and it reached over 40, and the next one up, uh, which is the, or the rather the advanced decline, 18-day average advanced decline is in the bottom window, which reached over 40 in April there. It looks like pretty much April 1st. I see that, The yeah. next window up, yeah, yeah, the next window up is the 18-day uh, average up-down volume, which which also reached over 40 back in, looks like, you know, April 1st, you know, maybe give or take. But I said on, we were talking, and I said that usually, I went back in history, which back 2010, and when that happens, you both those indicators get over 40, a surge pattern happens. Well, right after that, uh, the market kind of peaked and uh, consolidated since then. And now we, we're back on a buy signal. Well, right. those surge patterns really lead to powerful rallies. 
similar to the one we had like 2019 and 2016. So I'm thinking this one we're in right now, uh, since the other the other two did surge patterns, uh, and they really had powerful rallies. I think this one probably will too. So I, I'm thinking we're going to break above 30, you know, the previous highs of 36, and probably get somewhere in the 40s on GDX. I'm thinking 40, 44, 45 up in that range. And so I don't know, but there's a lot of good stuff. Going Which on makes there. sense then, because 40, 40, 45 I mean, is the high of, them, so. of uh, 2020. Say it again. 45, 45.78 is the high of 2020. Thought, okay. Thought, yeah, okay, $45 yeah. is the I, high I'm of the. We're going to take at least a good shot at that. Right, which is you sweet. Your, no, I'm with you, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm thinking, with, uh, I guess the stars are aligned on a, on a bigger time frame, on an immediate term time frame. And especially on a uh, short-term time frame, right? So the, the, this current rally is just is, is, is we'll probably see some sort of high in October. You'll see another consolidation. The consolidation, I think, instead of the market getting the crap beat out of it, which is already have. If you look at that first chart I showed you, you know, since 2021 January, the market really got the crap beat out of it. Yes. So we're done. I think going down. We got a base building period going on right now on the bigger time frames. Um, on on this uh, weekly GDX cumulative chart, uh, so I think we're building cause here. So I think next, you know, like one and a half years is going to be the uh, gold stocks are going to be pretty much in favor. So and I don't know if you saw this today yet, but this dollar is getting absolutely destroyed, Tim. The dollar, the the dollar index broke out its lows of a monster consolidation. You know, it already broke par. And this is the DXY. So in three days, the DXY kind of went from like 103 to 99. And it looks like the next move looks like it's going to be down to 89. So, you know, that's that the stars are there with us also. Yeah, yeah, yeah I totally agree. I don't follow the, the dollar. You know, to me, I'm always like I'm a simpleton. I try to keep it simple as I yep, can. I'm with you. Uh, I get it. So, but. Yeah, there's a lot of things affecting that, but the whole thing here is we, we got really advanced decline. We got up down volume matching. Yes, uh, kind of all three time frames. So it, it should be a really. A, I'm hoping that you know next year, year and a half, be a fun period. But if you ever look at the bigger, big time frames, gold stocks are cyclical. Right, they go up for a couple three years, yep. and they come right back down again. Right, they go up a couple three years, and they come right back down right. again. So. Yeah. So, so whatever this next sell signal is, you know, on, on the bigger time frames, uh, you better pay attention because I, I think you know they all come back out you again. But now right get, now, I, I get think that we're, quote, we're folks. Good. That quote that Tim just said, because Tim, I totally agree. I've said it many times, and you know what's so sad to me, Tim, is that there's so many gold bugs. I mean, we trade gold, okay, and there's nothing yep. wrong with a gold bug, but you got to sell because. The bottom line is that there's a lot of money when these things go up, but they are cyclical and they go back down, period. There's no doubt yeah. about it. And that's, that's what makes them so much fun. But if you don't sell, then there's no fun, man. You know, because, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, you had all this money in your account and you don't sell. And it's like, okay, man. And then all of a sudden it's down at a lower price again. So, wow. Yeah. yeah but, but the thing about gold stocks, too, I mean, when they run, they, they, they don't, you know, they do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times. Yes. Uh, and I remember BGO when I first, uh, <laughs> my big hit back in, yep. I don't know, 2000. I bought that thing at a quarter. It went to $16. I know, man. So, Six but I sold before. But yeah. I didn't get to six. But I did buy it at around a quarter, 28, 27. Oh, yeah, so, we did. I, I think I got under 32 cents. I mean, remember, we had BGO. That's when CD, that's when quarter lane was actually a good one, too. CDE. That they they blew their brains out, but yeah, we I think we got yeah that that was that was pretty intense, man. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. it was intense. And so that's why I'm saying here when they run, they run. Right. And so, but they don't run forever. They that's don't. The problem with they them. don't. That's it's not so. like an apple. Then you know you're only going to make so much money in the gold market, but you're going to make it very quick, folks. That's that's the point here. Okay, so let's go right. to the next shot. All right. Yeah, next chart. This is kind of a warning shot over the vowel here, I guess. Okay. But uh, this. 
this chart is uh, the second window up from the bottom is just a 10 day average of the uh, arms index or trend, T R I N. Okay. Now you shaded that area between 90 and, eight, uh, 90 and 80 is a 10 day average. So every time uh, this indicator got to uh, minus 90 or lower, uh, I drew a red line. And so there's a lot of red lines going all the way back to looks like about mid-2019. So it's kind of a short-term indicator, but it, it does give uh, pretty good signals. So all those red lines, usually at a minimum, usually market just uh, stalls. And sometimes uh, they, they pick out major highs. And so yesterday we were at uh, 0.9, today we're 0.95. But we're kind of in an area where it's, it's, it's it can get dangerous you know 0.9 is the minimum um so it's it's do you do you get sell signals off this not really it just tells you where you are in the market it gets gets tricky yeah no i'm with you i got it i trust me i got it (laughs) yeah yeah so but so let's flip to the next year okay uh so you know so you got a warning sign there okay this chart is actually it, 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 it can, uh, it can, uh, whoops, I did the wrong chart. Uh, this is the wrong chart? I, you? No, I get- actually I did. This is right. This is right. I, I, I kind of added to it, and I'm not sure why I sent you, but uh, this this chart is a chart that um, can really pick out highs. And okay, here, just, is- it, Tim, just hold that thought for a second. We got another quick break. We'll come right back. That's that's right. that's a good tease, folks. Okay, because it's going to be the top picking chart. This this is uh, Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up seventy three. Nasdaq's up two twenty nine. S and P's up thirty eight. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Dow Industrials up eighty five. Nasdaq's up two thirty five. S and P's are up forty. We're talking with our Tim, our man, Mr. Tim Ord. It can reach Tim every trading day at Ord dash oracle.com we are talking now the s and p okay tim i got this chart up right uh, did uh, i sent you over another chart sent it to tommy and sent it to jacob oh. sent it to you did okay you time to put that one up no we'll get it yep absolutely one second did you send it to me too or just them yeah i sent it to all three of you okay cool one second Is it the, um, okay, one second, hold on, Tim Wood. Sorry, one second. That's all right. That's all right, let's see. The one, we, we the one I have up here is top email. picking weekly uh, S&P with the VIX. Yeah, with the SPX, the VIX, higher high equal bull. Anyhow, uh, did you get it? Yeah, I think I have it up. Uh, that's what I yeah. That's what I get up. S and P higher highs and SPX VIX right, ratio, okay. right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, the bottom window uh, is the VIX. Anything below uh, uh, seventeen, yes, using the I have it. In Good. trending mode. Okay. And and so far, you know, today when I blew this chart up, uh, typed this chart out. It was 1329. That remains bullish. But what I really watch for is the next chart up from the bottom, the second window up from the bottom. Yes. Which is just the SPX VIX ratio. Right. And so the VIX really kind of gives you a warning that a, a top may be showing up. Okay. Because the VIX starts going up and the, SP is, uh, the SPX is uh, both going up. That's usually a bad sign. And right now, over the last couple of weeks, the s and P's has made higher highs, and also that ratio has made higher highs. Had that ratio made lower highs, that would be the time to, to possibly sell your position or look even at your short position. Okay, this but is great to know. Right so, now, this, so right now, sorry, and that's, that's the ratio I'm waiting for, trust me, because let me tell you something, it's really hard for me to buy this market, but I've, <laughs> I've been following this thing, man. So it's a trip up at these levels, right? It's like, man, oh man, I, you know, but the bottom line is that, this, so this thing is still higher, the ratio is still higher, right? Yeah, the ratio is yeah. still higher. So, yeah. you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, it's, you know, I'm getting ready to sell, you know, no, nah, it's, uh, 
I don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, normally when these highs occur, nobody believes you anyhow. I know. You know? I know. You know and it takes, takes, you know, it takes guts to, you know, step in front of a train, hoping it's going to stop before it hits you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, Seriously. So you, you got to, you know, wait for these signals to occur. And, uh, you know, nothing's perfect, but there's two indicators here that suggest this market still can move, move higher. It'll change all of a sudden. Right, um, but I don't. You know, I think this week's safe. Next week is option expiration week, which normally leans bullish. So we'll just wait and see. But as said, right now, you know, I've been long for a while. Yeah. And at the moment, I don't see a reason to sell that position. So, um, you know, seasonality turns bearish uh, July twenty seventh. I think it runs into October twenty seventh. So I think we'll still have kind of a rough summer. But the gold uh, issues will probably really be outperforming. You know, the S&P, so that's probably the place to be. And the equity markets, you know, we could see, I don't know what type of a decline, or it may be just a sideways market. We'll have to wait and see, but right now it remains bullish. Yeah, and you know what's amazing, Tim, is that the, actually when we were talking on the phone too, but to let the, the, the you know listeners know, what happens is that the Fed meeting, folks, is July 26th, and the rebalance inside the NDX 100 is July 27th. So it's ironic that that lines up with, Maybe the beginning of a you know a bearish uh, at least well lines up with a a bearish cycle. Let's put it this way, you know. So, yeah. but yeah. guess what? It's, it's only July thirteenth right now, man. We could be up another hundred S and P points before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could. We don't know. So, but you know, you, you play the numbers and stuff, and so this is what this game's about. Yeah, so, and uh, but. so. Yeah, this is pretty cool, man. I, I get it. So the middle of that yeah. big retracement, week, the weekly S and P. Oh, I got it too. It's the weekly S and P. That's what you're looking at too, right? Right. Yeah. This is the weekly. So yeah. I traded with the daily uh, stuff, and, and you know, uh, you know, this is not in books. That's the trouble. You have to go figure this stuff out yourself. Right. Right. And Which is so, so cool. Experiment right. a lot of different stuff and. And, uh, you know, trend your friend stuff. And, you know, and so yeah, I had to I start playing around with the VIX. VIX had a lot of information in it. It's just trouble trying to find out how to get it out of it, you know. Right. So, uh, but, you know, you don't really want to get too bearish here until that VIX starts rising. Yes. And uh, I don't know when that's going to come, but evidently the smart money thinks it can go higher, and that's keeping the VIX down. So we'll wait until, you know, they decide that, we're probably near some sort of a high. So it's, it's uh, you know, if you look back in history here, you know, every time that thing was, you know, where it is right now, the market really, in general, just stayed higher. Yes. You know, until right at the end, and then um, that ratio, that big starts going up, and that ratio starts going down. And I thought last week when that ratio, we had a little minor consolidation, and the SPX VIX ratio did turn down, which I uh, noted uh, I think on our last discussion, I'm thinking, well, this could be it. Well, it yep. turns out Mark went to new high, and also that ratio went to new highs. Right. So I'm thinking, well, that wasn't it. You know so, what's wild, Tim? So check this out, folks. And I remember this so well. July 14th of 1998, okay? We were on the okay. air, you and I. And I was on the air. I used to have a, a home down in Menemshire Harbor, okay? And I was doing the program... If you ever saw Jaws, folks, okay, I was out on the deck doing the program live. And that's when the market had the Asian contagion. And I remember it so well because, so picture it, what I had to do, I packed up my stuff. I had a Boston whaler, jumped in the whaler, <laughs> went over to Falmouth, get in my car, and came all the way back because that was the beginning of the downtrend from July 14th going all the way to October. And then remember in October, that's when we were on the air. And then you said to me, I got to get off the air because I got to buy this market. Because that, that's when Alan Greenspan and uh, Ruben came on the air and took interest rates down by two, two, uh, 200 basis points or 2% at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll never forget yeah. July 14th. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I remember that because... Uh, it was it was about a half hour before the close, I think, yes. when we were talking. And, right. And you had some other guy on there, too, I yeah, think. Yeah, we had was, we had Mark and we had Peter. There's three of us. There was three of us on there. We were trading live, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I went on and you know, got off and I'm thinking, this, 
I was trying to. Uh, back then, you had two two computers. You know, remember those? Yes. Uh, well, CTR. I don't know what you call those things. That's you know, right. You didn't really see very well with them. Right. And I was trying to put the orders in, and we were talking. I'm thinking, you know, I got to hang up here because I was buying call options. Right. 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 Know, I was trying to get in there, and <laughs> and, and actually, that was the low. That was the low. I think it. That was the low. Yeah. The, and then the market never turned back. And, no, that was uh, it, man. It, 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 well, listen, yeah, man, that was, that Tim, was, it's always fun. a pleasure, oh. man. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next week, okay? All right, sounds good. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Yeah. Don't forget, folks, you can get a hold of them at or.oracle.com. Or Stay right there, folks. Come right back. <laughs> <laughs>